بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so I want to make a video today on ecclesiastical law and religious liberty or rather religious liberty and ecclesiastical law and basically the idea in America specifically so basically going back to this idea that the whole point of there being a multiplicity of jurisdictions like there being multiple states under the federation is so that each state can have its own ecclesiastical law right so uh, depending and just more generally right ecclesiastical law goes back to the idea of an ecclesia which is basically some people some group of individuals gathering upon a common faith a common substance a common word a common statement and whenever they gather upon it they're a nation or micro nation so the law of micro nations if you know anything about that is this exact thing that i'm talking about that in modern law or in in like post enlightenment law it's acknowledged that people have a right to congregate into ecclesia and once they're participating in a substantial community they have a implicit state they implicitly form a state and then they have a right to determine the law of that state in accord with their own substance right so post immigration to so religious liberty right and this goes back to the question of indi like abstract individualism versus organic unity so if you look at these two opposite extremes right you look at individualism you can see that each individual is perfectly um is perfectly individual right like they're perfectly unique their own sense of subjectivity is indivisible their own sense of personality and consciousness since the day they're born till the day they they'll die they're perfectly individual right or even if you look at their body in space and time right but if you look at it in terms of an organic process every living thing on the planet comes from one cell and we ourselves are a product of intercourse of our parents and then we have children too so there's a sort of organic unity also so there's a radical individualism like in terms of an abstract if you analyze the individual subjectivity there's a radical individualism and if you analyze the biology or the body the incarnate body there's a radical unity of all people right so there has to be some sort of balance between individualism and collectivism and so again uh in modern law whenever an ecclesia gathers it creates a sort of unity and there's a communion of souls so to speak and it's natural for them to have their own law and i think post uh and religious liberty really what that means is religion in in the way the founding fathers thought about it and the way it truly is is an order it's not something you can you can individually enact so for example in islam you're supposed to as much as possible there's nuance to this but you're supposed to pray in congregation you're supposed to participate in the congregation right and there's an order that should exist amongst the congregation and that is the law or the social contract amongst the congregation and aspects of it are explicitly stated in the quran and aspects of it are implicit in aspects of it are derived from the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his interactions with his companions right so there's an order uh, that exists within every religious community right and and this can then be extrapolated i i don't want to go into geopolitics in this video but it's exactly the same thing where you have these different civilizational spaces which have a common substance and those common substances have to uh have a particular order to express the substance in the world right and it's natural for each a uh, particular civilization of a a particular substance to want the sovereignty and independence of its own space to be itself right so inside of america how do we understand this inside of america so ecclesiastical law even in common law is seen to be the highest law for example in equity jurisprudence you can appeal to the conscious it acts in personam which means a person's conscience uh what it should be de jure right not like if they're obviously if they're being hypocritical and they don't want to give you what they're supposed to give you then you go to the court to an equity court and the equity court can tell them your conscience should require you to do you say you're a muslim you say you're a christian you say you're a jew uh, you got a big beard you you practice you observe the law 
uh, the ritual law well your own law requires you to do this thing why aren't you doing it and they can hold that person to do it because equity jurisprudence acts in personam equity jurisprudence is the place where ecclesiastical law uh, is incorporated into secular law it, the equity jurisprudence because it acts in personam is the place that ecclesiastical law like sharia or the ecclesiastical law of the Catholic Church is incorporated into secular law. And ecclesiastic law in the common law tradition is the highest law. It is the highest law. It's the one that governs everything else. Right? So in America, we have to understand the law of ecclesia as, as an essential aspect of religious liberty. Religious liberty, what it means, it's the right to participate in an ecclesia and to govern yourself according to the ecclesiastical law of your chosen ecclesia, right? And so the state originally, when there was less diversity and they had newly been chartered, the colonies that each one was chartered to be some place uh, with, a, with a unified ethnos, meaning Maryland was only for Catholics predominantly, right? And uh, Pennsylvania was mainly for Quakers or whatever. Um, so these places had a unified ethnos, they had a unified uh, kind of group, right? They didn't have that sort of uh, substantial diversity. They had Maybe they had a diversity that, diversity that was more superficial, but it had a substantial unity, right? However, when diversity gets to a certain level, for example, you have to have the 13 colonies cooperate with one another, you have to give a statement of a common word. And that's what the Declaration of Independence was. It was a statement of the common word. It was speaking at the most abstract terms so that everyone can sign it onto it. So, so the American Revolution and the creation of the American Constitution wasn't this act of secular secularism in the sense that it was a negation of religion. It was the formation of a meta-ecclesia. It was taking the essentials, uh, like natural law being the essential uh, that everyone can agree upon. It's the formation of a meta-ecclesia and a meta-ecclesiastical law. That's what the formation of the U.S. Uh, Constitution was. And post-1965, when you have a lot more immigration from Asia and uh, other parts of more orthodox parts of Europe, what we need is we need to recognize that the states themselves, for, for example, at the beginning, the federal government, uh, provided this meta ecclesia, but now the states themselves have so much diversity. You have different types of Protestants in every single state. You have Muslims in almost every single state. You have Hindus in every single state. You have different people who are in completely different ecclesia and therefore should be governed by the a completely different ecclesiastical law. So the state law, the substantial law of the state, which is common law in, in most states except Louisiana, in those those places, there needs to be this recognition in law that when someone is participating in, in an ecclesia or long term has a set of relationships within an ecclesia, that there's a law of the ecclesia, which is called ecclesiastical law. And that ecclesiastical law is at the very least a binding contract on that person. So religious liberty, as the founding fathers understood it, was this freedom to participate in your chosen ecclesia without compulsion, to choose one and to participate in it, and to have equitable um, equitable interpretation or equitable construction of the law of that um, ecclesia, and, and to have recourse to secular courts who could then, in the case where there's controversy within an ecclesia, uh, it can, the secular court could settle in a dispute equitably and justly between such controversies or if so within the ecclesia if there's controversy there's a power structure that's corrupt and there's a minority within that that is within the ecclesia who's challenging that like a reformer of sorts then that person's rights like christ uh within the jewish community the romans above them with the meta ecclesia right that sort of thing or if there's conflict between different ecclesia so like the the baptists and the methodists fight each other or the muslims and the methodists fight each other if this sort of thing happens then you have a secular court that can can look at natural law can look at substantial law divorced from theology 
and can settle the matter in, in an equitable and unbiased sort of way. Right? America wasn't supposed to be secular in, in the terms that we were to take religion out of everything. It meant that we were supposed to form a meta-ecclesia based upon natural law such that uh, we recognize that no matter how you practice religion, whether you are Muslim or Hindu that, or, or, or Christian or a Jew, that natural law is the same. And so every religion, to some degree or another, there are important differences. And if you believe in one, it does mean you believe in the exceptionalism of that particular religion. But generally, we can recognize that most people who are sincerely practicing religion are approximating the same truth to some degree, at least the same moral truth, if not the same theological truth, the same moral truth is being approximated by all these different religions. And, and because religion is the only way to kind of inculcate character and morality in a sustainable and substantial way in society, religion is necessary for, for people to exist, for a country to function. You need ethics and morality, and that ethics and morality really sustainably can only be rooted in religion. And so you'll always have these ecclesia that form in any society, in any country. And, and religious liberty in America was your ability to participate in that sort of order or organization. I think now in, in the United States, what's important is because we have so much non-European immigration or over the last you know 100 years almost, what we need is we need the US uh, state, uh, the Supreme Court, and also the state governments to recognize itself as a meta-ecclesia, that there is a common substance we can call Adamic substance or you know the substance of being human. And that substance or that natural law um, is, is, is binding on everyone. And people who come who do, don't want to participate in that, that essential substance, right? That essential substance that's common to all of us, they don't want to construct their religion that way or don't want to interpret it that way or don't want to be subject to our meta-ecclesia that we formed, then those are the type of immigrants that we can't have in America. And those people who do come, uh, who want religious liberty, that th what religious liberty means is their, their ability to participate in this sort of community. Anyways, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.